If I could, I'll go ahead and call our meeting to order. It's 545. This is the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees of the San Angelo Independent School District held Monday, March 29th, uh, beginning at 545. So that covers that. First item on our agenda is to call our meeting to order and establish a quorum. Uh, even though it doesn't look like um, we're all here together, we, uh, Mr. Hernandez is not here, but the rest of the board team is here. So I appreciate everyone being here. So we do have a quorum of our board team. Next item on our agenda is our invocation. We're uh, really honored this evening to have C.J. Lucky, who's the youth pastor at Freedom Fellowship Church, and he's going to lead us in our invocation. Thank you guys so much for having me. I greatly appreciate it. It's an honor uh, to be here uh, this evening. Just want to share some quick words of encouragement just for everybody in the room. Uh, it's, it's a quote that I really love by C.S. Lewis that says, children are not a distraction from important work. They are the important work. And I just want to appreciate you guys. Thank you guys so much for your investment, not only in, this, in our students in SAISD, but our community as well. I'm, I'm a huge believer in investment and investing in our students. I believe they're going to be great. I believe that our ceiling is their floor, and they're going to go so much farther than we ever did. So thank you guys so much for every single thing that you do. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you so much for the honor and privilege it is, Father, to be able to approach your throne of grace with our heads bowed and our hearts humbled, Father. We just thank you for this meeting that's about to take place, Father, that your Holy Spirit will guide everything that we say and do. Let everything we say and do and speak and present be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock, our redeemer. Father, we just thank you for the children uh, that's represented for the teenagers that's represented the educators that's represented and everyone that plays a part in SAISD being the great district that it is father we just thank you for the San Angelo community father for a family uh, oriented community and we just thank you that the best is still yet to come father we just ask that you continue to um, guide our steps in every place that you have us go the decisions that we have to make the things that we have to vote for father that we will always vote with acknowledging you first and, and always vote father uh, with with the children in mind. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise for everything that you've done in the past, what you're doing right now in the present, and what you're going to do in the future. And it's in Jesus' precious, holy, most powerful name I pray. Everybody say amen. Thanks, Pastor Lucky. We appreciate you being here. Um, our next item, we're honored this evening to have some student leaders from Santa Rita Elementary School. And as they come forward, I'll introduce them. So we have uh, Miss Emma Howman. We have Ms. Kinley Thomas, we have Mr. Aiden Reyes, and we have Mr. Uriah Polanco. So if y'all would stand, they're going to lead us in our pledges. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Okay, whoever, y'all stay there, turn around so the cameras can see you. And so anyone that brought, came along with you can come up close and get some pictures. Y'all can get closer. Thank y'all so much. We appreciate y'all being here. I'll go ahead and read our script before we get started on our recognitions. Good evening and welcome. As the president of the Board of Trustees of San Angelo Independent School District, I'd like to welcome all of you who are present at tonight's regular board meeting. I also welcome those of you who might be watching this tape of our meeting on Public Access Channel 4. We appreciate your interest in our students. All items will be discussed at our meeting this evening have been posted as required by Texas state law. As you may be aware, our board meets a minimum of two times per month, and most if not all the items on our agenda this evening have been previous, previously discussed at our earlier board agenda uh, board workshop. Our, our earlier pre-agenda board workshop, I'm having trouble reading. As members of the SAISD Board of Trustees, we're here to set goals, listen to reports from our superintendent, approve budgets, contracts, and personnel appointments, and to make policy for the school district. Please keep in mind that our meeting is a meeting of the Board of Trustees held in public and is not a meeting of the public. 
However, with that in mind, we have an item on each one of our meeting agendas that allows anyone present who wishes to speak to our board team an opportunity to do so. I'll make certain that we give everyone an opportunity to speak on any item not listed on our agenda this evening. Additionally, prior to taking any votes, I'll ask audience members if they would like to make any comments. Anyone wishing to make any <coughs> comments on any agenda item should do their best to limit their comments to five minutes. In compliance with state law, these proceedings are recorded and will become a part of SEISD's permanent legal record. In order that the tape might adequately reflect the proceedings, I ask that you please refrain from talking while others might be speaking. And I also ask that, as I remind my fellow board team members, to please turn off or silence your cell phones at this particular time. Again, it's my pleasure to welcome you to tonight's meeting. Thank you for taking the time to be here this evening. We appreciate your interest in the activities of our students in the business of SEISD. Um, our next item on our agenda is item four, um, and Ms. Wood and Ms. Turk are gonna handle that. That's recognitions. First item is recognition of Central High School and Lakeview High School student musicians. Thank you and good evening, Mr. Lehman, Dr. Deathloff, and members of the board. We are so pleased to begin our evening by honoring and recognizing outstanding achievements of some of our San Angelo ISD high school and middle school bands and orchestras at March UIL concert and sight reading competitions, as well as mariachi at the UIL solo ensemble contest. Our wonderful directors are here with us this evening to provide more details. Before I turn it over to them, I want to note that San Angelo ISD extends proud congratulations to the talented members of the Lakeview High School Band, Mariachi and Orchestra, Central High School Orchestra, and Glenn Lee and Lincoln Orchestras, and commends their harmonious teamwork in creating beautiful music while exemplifying the attributes of the SAISD learner profile. We extend special thanks to our dedicated SAISD staff, especially these directors here with us tonight, that help develop and cultivate the talents of our students. I will pass it over to Lakeview High School Band Director Josh, uh, Josh Bailey at this time. I just wanted to thank you all for having us out here to speak to you today. Um, like she said, I'm Josh Bailey, the Band Director at Lakeview High School. Um, it's really easy to get up here and talk about the accomplishments of our students here in San Angelo ISD. Um, it's been a really tough year for everyone, but uh, band, orchestra, mariachi is the place that they get to go at school where they're not in class. And so it's something they sign up for, something that they're not forced to do. And so they really enjoy it. And it's really great to be able to be um, leading a group like that. And this year, we didn't attend marching contest, which kind of bummed the students out, but we worked really hard in concert band. And uh, we went to concert and sight reading here in March. We went to the early band contest and we received a sweepstakes award. So we got uh, first vision ratings from all six judges and the band did a really great job. Um, we have a really great team on the north side. We have myself, the head director at Lakeview, Jesse Bailey is the assistant and Sarah Clark uh, heads up Lincoln Middle School and Victoria Gonzalez is the assistant middle school director at Lincoln, and they go to contest this week on Thursday, so uh, I think we're gonna have some really great results from them as well. But thank you for recognizing our uh, band programs tonight. Hello, my name is Rosanda Ramos. I'm the mariachi director for Lincoln Middle School and Lakeview High School. First of all, thank you again for all the support this year. Like Mr. Bailey said, it's been a, a really tough year for everybody. But, uh, but it's good to be making music in the classroom, especially with the students, because it just, it just brings a, something, something positive for the day uh, in the midst of everything that's going on. So it's been, it's been amazing. So uh, this year, the mariachi has been incorporated into all state, um, all region, uh, which is TMEA's version of the UIL contest. And uh, for being the first year, our, our mariachi students uh, went ahead and, and they auditioned, and they had 11 students make the the all-region mariachi, which I'm very proud of. And then um, we also did the solo and ensemble, UIL solo and ensemble contest in Monahans, and we received a one, which we're moving on to the state contest for the fifth consecutive year, which will be in, in uh, not until June, June 18th 19th, and 19th. So we're hoping that everything goes good and we can be out there representing Lakeview and SASD. So again, thank you all for the support that you've given us.
Hello, my name is Stephanie Infante, and I am the orchestra director at Lincoln Middle School and Lakeview High School. I am super proud of my kiddos, and it, we're rebuilding our program, and I'm super excited to see all the accomplishments they're going to be having in the future. My Lakeview students did receive an excellent rating for their sight reading skills, and I am uh, so um, proud of them and their hard work. And they did receive a three in a concert, but last year they received a four, so it is so much better than last year. And I love working with these students. I love <coughs> seeing them, you know, grow in their musicianship. Because my first year teaching, um, my um, sophomore students were eighth graders, and it's so awesome to see them come up and just grow in their musicianship and just learn so much more. So I'm excited to see what they're gonna do in the future, and I um, am grateful for this opportunity to work with these music students every single day. I absolutely love my job, so thank you. Hi, I'm Emily Rocha, the head orchestra director at Central High School, and this is Michael Martin. Um, we make a, a great team, um, and we actually have a wonderful team here. Um, we keep frequent contact with each other and support each other. Um, we are all very, very proud of what our students have accomplished this year. Um, it, it has been a very tough year, as, as you Stated Josh and um, our kids have really overcome a lot. Um, we, I, I, if you bear with me, I'd like to just explain a little bit about the process of UIL um, so that you know what the kids went through to achieve what they did. Um, so first of all, students prepare three pieces that are from a selected list of pieces that they have to that are deemed on their level by the state of Texas. After they perform these pieces, they do what is called sight reading, and that is where they receive a piece of music that they have never, they have never seen before, and we haven't seen it either, and we have a set amount of time to teach it to them without them making any sound. They cannot make any sound from their instruments. After a certain amount of time, they perform this piece, and then they are rated on that performance. And um, it is, it's very intense. It's especially intense for the, young, the youngest students as they are fresher. And um, so we're very, very proud of all that they've done. This year, um, all four Central High School orchestras are in sweepstakes at, um, at UIL contest. That means that they earned uh, the highest rating on stage as well as in sight reading. Um, I do want you to know that um, we are very proud to say that this is the 37th straight year that Central High School has received sweepstakes, and we are one of the longest running streaks in the state of Texas. So we're, we're very, very proud of our students and, um, and of our program, um, and we look forward to seeing what the future Hello, I'm Gretchen Smith. I'm the director of orchestras at Glenn Middle School. And I first of all want to thank you so much for um, recognizing the work of our students. I want to um, thank Tiffany Hubner for all she has done to support us getting. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, if nothing else, how much she went to bat to get us transportation, I will never, never forget. And, and for uh, Emily Rocha, thank you for being our region chair. One of the things that typically happens is we typically travel to Odessa, but she made arrangements because of COVID to have our day of the competition here and have our judges move in front of our students instead of our students. And all of these arrangements that really helped us to be safer, helped us to have best practices. And um, one of the things one of our judges kept commenting about was that it was so good to see live music. They're from districts that are still entirely virtual.
Um, my seventh grader, so on the screen right now is my non-varsity orchestra. This is primarily eighth graders. And they, so they've been playing their instrument for three years. Um, they received rankings of excellent on the uh, concert portion. And excellent is a really high standard and it's still not the top in this competition. In their um, sight reading, they received superior and they were awarded this plaque, which we are incredibly proud of. The ability to read and play music is, um, is a complicated thing. Um, my sub non-varsity group is primarily seventh graders, and um, this group not only have they been meeting in two different classes because of the cohort system this year, the last time they played on a stage in front of other people, they were playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star as beginners. And so the fact that they were able to achieve a high level of success and receive excellent rankings in both um, sight reading and concert, I'm immeasurably proud of. Um, and then my top group, my varsity group, is a dream team like I've never taught before. Having them every day has been a delight and a privilege. And um, even today when the power went out for an hour, that's who I had and we had a blast. So they received sweepstakes. It is our first sweepstakes in five years. Um, I believe we all cried before we hugged the trophy, and I could not be prouder of my students for their hard work, for their dedication, and for how they just keep showing up every day, even in this unprecedented and strange, strange year. Thank you for supporting music programs. It is a, a privilege to even have orchestra in, um, in uh, West Texas, so thank you so much. Hello, I'm David Engelman, uh, orchestra director at Lee Middle School, and I take issue going last because everybody said great stuff and I don't have anything left. Um, this year, I only took one orchestra, I took my varsity orchestra, which is made up of all of my eighth graders. Um, we did very well. We, um, like everybody said, this has been a tough year, um, especially for students at Lee Middle School. Um, but we took all the eighth graders, they got an excellent, a two in our concert, and we were able to get a one, an excellent, a uh, superior in our sight reading. So, thank you much. Congratulations. We are so proud of each of you and all that you do to help those students. We are so proud of them in these times to be able to do that and achieve and succeed like that. Um, at this time, if y'all can join uh, Dr. Dethloff, if you don't mind coming up front. We'd like a picture. Bring all that hardware up here. We're very proud of that. So get up here and we'll take a photo together. And if Ms. Tiffany Hebner can join us as well. And I don't know if any of y'all got to hear some of the uh, fall winter concerts that we put available online to listen to. You can hear some of these wonderful, talented kiddos playing. So that's a good opportunity. So congratulations. Thank you. I'm going to continue. So tonight we have another very special recognition honoring an outstanding community partner and supporter of public education and literacy, HEB. I expect you are familiar with HEB since they've been proudly serving Texans since two, 1905. And we have two stores here in San Angelo, but tonight we are recognizing them for their support of our San Angelo Reads community-wide literacy initiative. Like San Angelo ISD, HEB understands the importance of reading and even has their own HEB Read 3 literacy program that encourages families to read to children three times a week. We applaud and support that as well. 
Earlier this month on International Women's Day, HEB supported us by providing over a thousand copies of a special book, The Nuff. It's right here. Such a cute book. The wonderful message. Uh, to gift each and every one of our San Angelo ISD first graders. That's books in the hands of kids to take home to continue to inspire the love of reading. HEB's generosity didn't stop there. They joined us for a fun read aloud at Bonham Elementary. I encourage you to watch it on our YouTube channel or Facebook page if you haven't already. And they brought celebrities that truly excited our kiddos like HE Buddy and Layla the Unicorn. I mean, kids were shrieking about that. It was so cute. Um, and they even provided snacks for our students at the Bonham campus and roses for our staff for International Women's Day. It was a wonderful event, but most importantly, a special gift to promote reading and learning beyond the classroom walls. Tonight, we are honored to have joining with us and accepting this recognition for HEB, story leader Nick George uh, at the new HEB location, and story leader Tasha Gallegos for the original HEB. And I also want to add that Ms. Gallegos did a wonderful job reading on the Read Aloud, so she is featured in that when you go watch it. So, uh, Dr. Deathloff, at this time, would you please help me recognize HEB and Nick and Tasha? Uh, we would like for you to come forward as well for a group photo. Please get, um, join me in giving HEB a very appreciative round of applause on behalf of our board members and our school district. Thank God, we really appreciate y'all being here and your support as well. Thank you. Great community partners that just make such a difference. Um, speaking of, um, I'm so happy to be able to follow that with another recognition of a very generous new community partner, Burlington Stores, the national off-price retailer that just recently opened a new store here in San Angelo. Burlington Stores donated $5,000 towards school supplies to our Fannin Elementary School teachers through its partnership with the national nonprofit organization AdoptAClassroom.org. Fannin Elementary Principal Kathy Humble, who is with us here tonight, um, Molly Johnson Turk, and I joined the Burlington crew for their official, official grand opening on March 19th. Uh, Principal Humble had this to say. On behalf of San Angelo ISD and Fannin Elementary, I would like to welcome our new local Burlington store and thank them and Adopt a Classroom for their generous donation to our school in this unique year which has presented trials for all of us in our school and community. We are so touched by this thoughtful gift. Their generosity will benefit each one of our students personally. I know our teachers will be so excited to be able to make a meaningful difference for their students because of this gift. We are thankful for the support we received from Burlington and adoptaclassroom.org. We had planned to have store manager uh, Alex Vega here with us at the new store tonight to accept the recognition, but he was unable to make it. We do extend our gratitude to Burlington Stores and Mr. Vega on behalf of San Angelo ISD, staff, teachers, administrators, the Board of Trustees, and most importantly, our educators and students at Fannin who will benefit from the gift. At this time, I'm going to ask Dr. Deathlon to get up again, I'm sorry, um, and our wonderful Fannin, uh, Principal Kathy Humble, and Assistant Principal Blanca Casillas uh, to join us for a photo and accept the giant check uh, visual on behalf of Fannin. Thank you, ladies. And then last but certainly not least, uh, tonight Molly and I get the great privilege to honor one of our own. We have the opportunity to see his talent and dedication on a firsthand basis daily. Jack Wilcox, San Angelo ISD community communication specialist and our resident jack of all trades, he truly is, 
was recently honored with 11, yes, 11 state awards at the 2021 Texas School Public Relations Association Conference, and that's TSPRA. TSPRA is the professional organization dedicated to promoting public schools through effective communications. We are so incredibly proud of Jack and truly appreciate um, his highly professional and evocative style and skill he brings to telling the story of San Angelo ISD, our students and staff. He is exceptionally deserving of these honors. SIISD strives to help our students achieve their hopes and dreams. And Jack, he helps us to showcase our students on that journey, as well as our educators and staff who shine in supporting and developing our students. From excellent videography, and you've seen some of that this year with the San Angelo A to Z video and some other wonderful works uh, that he would, helped us to produce, and to capturing moments with still photography, and you can see some of that behind each of you to creative out of the box and strategic thinking. He is a great communicator and true talent. His awards from TSPRA this year include best of category, which is the highest level that the TSPRA conference gives uh, for his photo sunset over San Angelo Stadium, seven gold star awards, including um, one for drone photos over Central and over Lakeview High School football games, graduating seniors digital billboard ad, and a celebrating all the ways our students are smart print ad, as well as three additional star awards for a promotional video. Again, he excels so much at the videography. And two social media campaigns. Uh, Jack Wilcox plays an instrumental role in our district communications, particularly this un during this unprecedented year, working with our leadership team to build communications, both in times of emergency, which we have had, and those detailing the uniqueness of the 2020-2021 school year, we are proud that he receives not only local recognition, but also recognition at the state level. Uh, Dr. Deathloff, at this time, would you please help me recognize Jack? And Jack, do you mind stepping away from the camera for a moment for a photo? Please join me in congratulating and thanking Jack Wilcox on behalf of our board, administration, communications team, and students at SISD. He truly embodies how our people make the difference. <laughs> Great job, Jack. And that concludes our recognition for this evening. And keep following our Facebook and website to see more of his great work. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wood. Our next item is item five on our agenda, the approval of our minutes. Do we have a motion to approve our minutes? Second. We have a motion for Mr. Gallegos and a second for Mr. Dental to approve our February 8th, 2021 special finance and pre-agenda meeting, our 2000. Um, our February 23rd, 2021 training meeting and our February 23rd, 2021 regular board meeting. Is there any corrections or additions anyone would like to make to our minutes? Any public comment concerning our motion? If not, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, indicate by saying no. Our motion passes. Our next item is um, referred to earlier as an item reserved for public comment. We're honored this evening to have uh, Brian Groves uh, who's the, um, with the city of San Angelo, and he wanted to come and speak to us a little bit about COVID-19. So thank you for, for being here. Evening. Thank you all for having me. Sure. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to the board, to the administration, uh, to all the staff at all of our schools that make our schools go. Obviously this year, this last year has been crazy, as everyone has said, and whether that's been virtual, whether that's been in person, um, Y'all, the work that y'all have done and the decisions that you've made is, has been commendable. And I know that all of the decisions have not been easy. Um, and I, I wanted to especially say I appreciate as a, a spouse to a teacher and as a uh, father to a child at, uh, that goes to fourth grade at Crockett, um, thank you for keeping the mask mandate in place. I think that is uh, essential for us to continue throughout the school year and to keep all of our children, our staff, and our community safe. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for everything you guys do for our community, and thank you to all the, the staff at all the schools as well. Thank you. We appreciate you being here and your patience and making those short comments, and certainly what you do at the city, we appreciate your work there. Um, our next... Um, Item is a report section of our agenda, our student enrollment report we received as part of, as part of our Friday facts. Um, 
we're still um, hovering around 500 students that we're still looking for, uh, but we uh, are doing well with that. Our, uh, that's item A. Item B is our four to six weeks average daily attendance report. Um, we're down from where we were uh, this same time last year, but up uh, compared to where we were um, on the third six weeks report. So our attendance has been slowly coming back, and we're appreciative of that since that's one of the ways that the primary ways uh, school districts get, get paid is based on average daily attendance by the state. Um, so that covers item B under reports. Item C's update of academic progress, and Dr. Ritter's going to give us an update at this particular time. Thank you, Dr. Dutloff, Mr. Lehman, and members of the board. Um, tonight, we are pleased to bring to you um, a report on our uh, career in technical education for students in um, at both Central and Lakeview uh, for our secondary students in San Angelo ISD. And so with us, I have Dr. Candy Callis, who will be presenting this report tonight. And um, we definitely want to also mention that uh, Roxanne Fentress is our Director of Career and Technical Education of CTE. And she's unable to be with us tonight, but she did want to say Thank you so much for your support of these programs. We have a lot of new courses, new innovative courses that we are going to move forward with this next school year. And we appreciate your support in helping us to provide this amazing education for our students and these opportunities for our kids to really help meet those learner profile attributes. So at this time, I'll hand it, turn it over to uh, Dr. Candy Callis, who is our Director of Secondary Curriculum and Instruction. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Lehman, members of the board, Dr. Detloff, thank you for your time this evening. I'm very excited to show you a little bit about some of the really transformational work that we're doing with our career and technical education programs here at San Angelo ISD. So we talked a little bit last month about some of the innovative courses that you approved. And so now I want to talk to you about how those are going to fit within our programs of study. Um, so, um, thinking about the ways in which we think about CTE, last month we talked about it not being the old vocational programs only that we typically think about. Um, we know that by 2020, so obviously this is even outdated, it's hard to find up-to-date information when you're talking about statistics, that two-thirds of jobs will require some type of post-secondary um, training, whether that's um, trade school, that's um, college, or even just on the job training. Um, so what we have done this year, Roxanne Fentress and I worked really hard uh, to reconfigure our programs of study to make sure that they made sense and that they were coherent and that they meet the needs of our students, but that they also help us with accountability. And so we, um, that's another really important facet when we're talking about CTE. Our CTE programs help us get um, college career readiness points when we're talking about accountability and so we want to make sure that our programs of study are set up in a manner in which they will get a, our students to what we consider completer status it's a very long rule I can tell you later if you want to know it um, so the link here I just want to make sure you know where it is so on our website, you can actually see the actual opportunity guide. This is what Roxanne and I developed this school year so that our students are able to see all of the programs that we offer. This is published on the SAISD website, and it's under the Families, uh, Parents, and Students tab. And it does detail everything I'm going to talk to you about tonight, but I'm actually going to highlight tonight just the changes in programs, not everything that we offer. So I wanted to make sure that that you knew where this was if you wanted to go through that later. Okay, so the first addition that we have, the program of study is, in, is actually the Agriculture, Food, and Natural Resources. Um, and it's, the pathway is Agricultural 
engineering and the course specifically lots of words is agricultural equipment design and fabrication and so this is one of the courses that we added in this pathway so that our students could get to that completer status the next is in the arts av technology and communications program of study and we are adding graphic design and illustration again to get them to that completer status and then in our business, marketing, and finance program of study, um, we actually have several new courses. Many of these you'll recognize from the list of innovative courses that you approved. So we will be adding a business, principles of business, marketing, and finance. This will be offered both at Central on Oaks and Lakeview High School. Really, this is kind of that gateway course where students will take it and decide which area, whether it's marketing, finance, or business really interests me the most. Um, sports and entertainment marketing too, and entrepreneurship. Then we are going to be adding again another introductory level course. This is Principles of Health Science. And so this is one of those programs of study where I talked about it's really important for us to reconsider the way we think about CTE courses. And so this health sciences program of study is really phenomenal. It's going to be amazing for any student who's interested in entering the medical field. So we're really going to look at building students' um, coursework so that they're prepared to go on and complete nursing degrees or medical degrees, um, we really want to set them up for success. Um, in the hospitality and tourism, we're adding another introductory course that's introductory to culinary arts. Previously, we were just starting with culinary arts one. So again, this will give students that introductory level knowledge. Um, we're also adding principles of hospitality and tourism. And then again, the course you approved, foundations of restaurant management. Um, for information technology, this is the one all the kids are going to love. So we're adding web design and web game development. Those actually will be caught, taught by Howard College instructors. So those will not be taught by SAISD instructors. And then we did talk about this previously, but we are adding a complete new program of study, really with that focus on mental health and wellness. So um, that's family and community services. And the courses that we're going to be adding there are the principles of community service, Human growth and development and child development are actually courses that we've offered for some time, but they fit within this program of study, so we're able to apply that learning there. Then counseling and mental health and practicum in human services. Then we're going to be adding um, an additional course for our STEM Academy students um, that start, they start in Lincoln Middle School and then they advance through uh, Lakeview. So they start with the principles of applied engineering course. We're actually currently working with um, Howard College to offer technical dual credit to those eighth grade students for that principles of applied engineering course. Um, and then they will also earn technical dual credit for the introduction to engineering design course as a ninth grade student. And then we're, we're working on bridging that to a um, associates of Applied Science degree to where they can really then lead into an engineering degree to get a jump start on their bachelor's degree in engineering. So we're very excited about that as well. Um, so overall, we are able to offer technical dual credit for 47 of our CTE courses for our students currently. Um, and if students take our cosmetology courses, they can then earn eight additional um, dual, technical dual credit courses as well. Um, depending on the qualifications of instructors, some of our dual credit courses are taught by Howard College instructors, some of them are taught by our teachers here in SAISD. So, in reality, I, um, we had our, you remember Zello, you approved that purchase last month. So we've began our onboarding process. And so when we talked about what, what we want to see in a year or three years or five years, um, my response really was that students can start to explore their career interests in high school. 
and not have to wait until they're in college and paying for it to do so and change their major 25 times like I did. And so that way, you know, they can really uh, look through all of these opportunities, try out different courses, see if they like met courses in the medical field or teaching or welding, whatever it is. So we really wanted to make sure that we built a very robust program so that all of our students can kind of find their niche and where they fit. Um, I'm going to skip past the video. I'm going to come back to it, so don't worry. Oh, did I quit going? I'm sorry. I was going on my iPad. So, but the one big thing when we were working with Mr. Waters and Mr. Ramirez um, on the opportunity guide, um, we wanted to make sure that all students in SAISD felt included. And even if they didn't feel like they wanted to take a health science course or a teaching course or a criminal justice course. So we built additional pathways as well, which you'll be able to see at the end of the opportunity guide, so that every single student when they're going into high school here in SAISD feels like they have a place. And so we built some pathways for athletics, for fine arts, for military science, computer science, advanced academics, et cetera. So that way, all students would be able to find a niche for their smartness. So um, Jack did some more amazing work for us, so I'm going to show you a video that he made um, really highlighting our CTE programs. See if it works.
that gives you an idea of some of the things that our high school students do on a daily basis. Um, all of our eighth grade students did actually get to see this video as well when they were working through um, creating their four-year plans for high school. Um, so um, th they were excited and really liked seeing all the opportunities they were going to have in high school. So do you have any questions for me? Mr. Lehman, may I, may I comment, Mr. Lehman? I just want to say, Dr. Callis, I know you can't tell under this face covering, but this is the broadest smile that I've <laughs> smiled for the 2021 school year uh, based on your uh, excellent presentation and leadership through this effort. So I just want to thank you and Dr. Rit Ritter and all the others involved. This is exceptional. Uh, this is why we sign up for this business. Uh, it's just stellar that we are providing kids pathways, I, pathways to success, and I love the... Uh, the terminology optional guide or uh, opportunity. opportunity guide <laughs> that uh, that really just uh, it just floors the way for our, our kids to to excel. So this is really incredible work, and I think it 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 is so. I mean, it's so congruent with all of the attributes of our learner profile. And I just want to thank you for uh, for spearheading this because these are the type of things that keep kids engaged in school. And when we talk about providing a relevant and inspiring education, uh, this is it. So thank you so much. Thank you. We couldn't do it without you or the board support. So I appreciate you all as well. Dr. Callis, I was wondering if that video is available on the website or YouTube? Um, actually, yes, it is posted on the um, CTE uh, website. Um, and then that, along with some other fun videos for uh, transitioning to high school, those are available on both Central and Lakeview's high website, along with some, some messages from the principals. So. Just real quick, Ms. Callis. Um, some of these kids, they also get their certifications um, through Howard and all that. So I know I've, I've attended some of the graduations for Howard College, and mm -hmm. uh, it's really good to see all these kids. These names will pop up. I go, that's a, that's a high school student, and, and they're getting ready. And that's what I, the, just the, the joy of that. And I, I get asked this question all the time, what do they have to offer? I had someone ask me that, day, don't they teach woodshop? I said, we got all sorts of stuff. You just got to look at it. Look it up on the on the website, I mean, so sure. this is a great thing. So thank you, thank of you course. for all y'all do. Of course, and the industry-based certifications that we currently offer are listed in the opportunity guide as well. And that is Ms. Ventress and I's next goal is to increase the number of industry-based certifications that we're offering for our students, so. Anything else? Thank you for that presentation, sure. great work. And certainly we talk a lot about what makes SCISD different. I think this is one of the main things that makes us different that we're able to offer so many uh, really great programs for our students. And I thank you again for listing not only the coursework that they can do, but all the other activities that they can be involved in on their campus. That's really, and, and I failed to mention that to our music teachers and orchestra teachers that were here today. They're, you know, We'd like to think that kids come to school just because they want to learn, but some of them are really passionate about other things, and uh, certainly music's one of those. So it's a great opportunity and opportunity that we, we offer to our students on a, on a daily basis. So thank you all for showing that. I, I wanted to add as well, um, this is something that Candy can speak to as well, but all of these courses and the fact that our district is really um, quite advanced with what we do for our students in this area that uh, comparatively speaking, we do very well with college readiness, with our coursework, our dual credit, hours for our students, um, and then also for certifications, industry-based certifications. Those are all a part of your accountability in a district. And so because we have these strong programs, this is only going to improve that. And so again, thank you all for your support and we're very excited about this next school year. Great, thank y'all. Good job. Okay, we'll move forward um, with our consent agenda. Do we, uh, do we have a motion to approve items A through J on our consent agenda? Move to approve items A through J on the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion from Mr. Parker and a second from Dr. Kingman to approve the items on our consent agenda. Those items are item A is to consider approval of our quarterly investment report ending February 28th of 2021. Item B is consider an order declaring cancellation of the Board of Trustees election for single member district two. 
uh, which occurs on May 1st of 2021. There's only one candidate for that election, so we're able to uh, cancel that portion of that election. Item C is to consider appointment of the Health Advisory Council for 2021 and 2021 and 2020, 21, 22, too many 2020s. Uh, these consider bids for Child Nutrition Department for uh, 2021. Uh, e's consider bid for bid number 2000-20-009 for maintenance, transportation, miscellaneous supplies. Item F is to consider bid number 20-014 for curriculum and instructional materials. Item G is considered bid number 21-002 for trades bid. Item H is to consider RFP number 21-003 for printing services. Item I is to consider superintendent's recommendations for 2021-2022 administrators contracts. Those were provided uh, to board members in a separate um, attachment by uh, Ms. Hopkins this past week. And item J is to consider superintendent's recommendations for personnel. I think there's just one of those uh, for current school year 2020-2021. Uh, uh, so those are those items. Anyone wishing to make comment on any of those items or pull any of those items for further discussion? Uh, I would remind those that might be watching our meeting um, tonight uh, that we've reviewed all these items in our pre-agenda board workshop uh, this um, past Monday. Uh, so here, no objection, I'll, uh, call, I'll ask for our vote. Yeah. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, indicate by saying no. Our motion passes. Our next item is item nine, to consider bills, accounts, and financial statements for, the, for February of 2021. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion from Mr. Dental and a second from Mr. Gallegos to approve our bills, accounts, and financial statements for February 2021. Is there any uh, board comment or public comment concerning our motion? Mr. Lehman, just to note to those watching on uh, Channel 4 that all these reports we reviewed earlier in our pre-agenda meeting uh, last week. Um, also, if you'd like to review these reports yourself, you can find them on our website online at saisd.org. If you'll click on the district tab, and you'll find another tab uh, labeled financial transparency. Thanks, Mr. Dindo, and certainly Bill does a good job as our treasurer to make sure that uh, he keeps us in line with all that stuff. I uh, so do we have any further board comment or questions? All in favor of our motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed indicate by saying no. Our motion passes. Our next item is item 10. Consider proposed amendment to the district's official budget in our child nutrition fund. Do we have a motion to approve? I can answer any questions on that if y'all want. It's an increase in revenue and expenditure, 75000 child nutrition from a grant for serving line equipment that they put in and received. Second. Thanks, uh, Dr. McForlan, for helping us out with that. Um, we have a motion from Mr. Dental, a second from uh, Dr. Kingman uh, to approve um, an amendment to the child nutrition fund budget. Um, it's an increase in revenues of uh, 75000 as well as an increase in expenditures of 75000 Any further questions or comments from our board team? Any public comment? If not, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, indicate by saying no. Our motion passes. Our next item is considering a proposed amendment to the district's official budget in our general fund. Um, do we have a motion to approve? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Doctor. I'm really just present to answer any questions I can answer. Yeah. It's really just a movement of money between functions. There's no that's a zero line, bottom line difference there um, from what was budgeted and, and just movement of money between the function. So, Perfect. Uh, Go ahead. I'll move to approve the approval of the general fund budget amendment for March 29, 2021 with changes to function codes which result in uh, with no changes to function codes which result in no monetary differences. Uh, with changes to function codes, I'm sorry, I'm reading it wrong. With changes to function codes, with, with, which result to no monetary differences. So, so we have a motion for Ms. Mizell Flint, Ms. Mizell Flint, and a second from Mr. Dindle. So I'm not the only one having trouble reading. Thanks, Amy. Um, other questions or comments from our board team? Any questions or comments? Any public comment concerning 
our motion. If not, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, indicate by saying no. Our motion passes. Item 12, um, I'm going to ask Ms. Mizell Flint to recuse herself. Um, this is the official appointment of, uh, to the Board of Trustees um, of the MHMR Services of the Concho Valley. Um, Amy's associated with that group professionally, uh, so that's why we're asking her to um, recuse herself. So we have um, the liaison representatives requested appointment of the following sheriff or representative of the MHMR Board of Trustees as an ex-officio non-voting member and uh, Sheriff Nick Hanna uh, representing Tom Green County uh, is a new appointment through October 31st of 2021 and he replaced uh, Sheriff David Jones who served on that board um, through the end of December um, 2020. So we're basically replacing one sheriff with the, the current sheriff with the previous sheriff uh, on that board. Any questions or comments concerning that? Do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve Sheriff Nick Hanna as the nominee recommended by the MHMR liaison rep representatives to serve on their board as an ex officio non voting member. Second. Thanks. Thanks, Dr. Kingman. We have a motion from Dr. Kingman and a second from Mr. Parker. Any other questions or comments? Any public comment? If not, all in favor of our motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, indicate by saying no. Our motion passes. Uh, our next item is to approve. Um, oh, sorry. Thanks. I would have just, you know, we would have left her back there. <laughs> that was we assigned Gerard that responsibility he failed <laughs> so our next item is item 13 to consider a resolution for region 15 superintendent year nomination uh, this is to approve the resolution to nominate Dr. Carl Detloff for the TASB superintendent of the year award uh, the resolution says San Angelo Independent School District's Board of Trustees on this date, March 29th, 2021, resolve to nominate Dr. Carl Detloff, Superintendent of Schools for Texas Association of School Board Superintendent of the Year for his exemplary and visionary leadership toward improving student performance in our schools. That's the resolution. Do we have a motion to approve? I make that motion. Do we have a second? Second. So we have a motion from Mr. Lehman, a second from uh, Mr. Gallegos. Um, any other board comment or questions? I'd like to thank our um, Miss Hurt. Is that it? I always Miss Johnson's what I used to say, Miss Hurt, and Miss uh, Turk. Thank you. Right, Miss Johnson Turk and Mrs. Wood uh, for working on that uh, nomination uh, with me. Any other questions or comments concerning that? Mr. Lehman, I'd just like to add that this agenda item uh, is really an acknowledgement of our district in its entirety, our board of trustees, our leadership team, our classroom teachers, and our principals for starting school on time this year uh, and navigating a pandemic uh, and still creating options for kids to stay engaged in a school setting and learning. So uh, I fully recognize the acknowledgement of our district in its entirety and the by this agenda item so thank you thanks dr detloff further questions or comments any public comment if not all in favor of our resolution to nominate dr detloff for tasby's superintendent of the year um, all in favor of that please indicate by saying aye. aye aye any opposed indicate by saying no our motion passes our financing uh, our announcements or our financing pre-agenda board workshop is scheduled for um, April 12th at 5.45 p.m. in our regular board meeting on April 19th, uh, also at 5.45 p.m. We're gonna go into closed session um, briefly. Under Texas um, 
I assume it's for personnel matters. Is that okay? I, Dr. Detloff told me that earlier, but I um, wasn't sure that the reason. So we're going to go into um, closed session uh, to discuss personnel matters. That's uh, under Texas Government Code 551074. So we'll do that. Okay, we're going to return from our closed session. Uh, we have an announcement to make that we had made no official action or took no official action while we were in closed session or no, certainly no votes. And uh, I've already covered our announcements, um, which include the announcements about our upcoming meetings. Anybody else have anything that they need to, we need to discuss this evening? If not, and hear no objection, we'll stand adjourned. <laughs>